You know, every time I think of Lucien Boutte, I can't get what Carl Frotch did to him out of my head. Lucien Boutte weighed in at 167.2. His opponent, the IBF, 168-pound champion of the world. James Chunky DeGale weighed in at 167 as well. Um, T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live. This is a fight that's going to be pretty good and it's under the radar. But also, if Lucien Boutte loses, then his career is somewhat done. Now, if you don't know who Lucien Boutte is, former IBF champion, he's actually fighting for the belt that he lost to Carl Frotch. Carl Frotch vacated while well, Carl Frotch was stripped. And then um, James DeGale was now the champion after beating Andre Durrell. And James DeGale has been on a pretty good run himself. Now, when it comes to the 168-pound division, it is stacked. And there's so many fights out there for both fighters to go that politics don't um, intervene in. For example, when it comes to Kalem Smith versus um, Bottle Jack, that's likely going to happen in the future. You can have James DeGale or Lucien Boutet go after the winner of that. Or if they want, they can go after a major unification fight that would be a big global fight, if not the United States, a big global fight against Arthur Abraham, who's the WBO champion. You know, then we don't know what the WBA is going to be doing with their belt right now. So I'm, I'm saying this. There are plenty of fights out there for James DeGale or Lucien Boutet to fight. But see, when it comes to Lucien Boutet, I just don't know how much he has left. He fought twice in 2012. He didn't fight again until 2014. No, wait, 2013? 2014. He fought um, Jean Pascal in 2014. He didn't fight in 2013 at all, if I'm correct. Correct me if I'm wrong. And then he fought his last fight in 2015. So that basically two fights since 2012. He's 35 years old. He did look good getting a knockout on uh, PBC. Because remember, if you don't know, he's signed by Al Heyman. So he's getting a lot of, um, he will be getting a lot of American exposure. But now I'm starting to think that will Lucien Butte go to that Antonio DeMarco, Robert Guerrero. Not that you know disrespect Robert Guerrero. But the, I'm, I'm thinking that will he go like that gatekeeper-ish? You know, type type deal. Will he be like that Saki Obika ish? Well, he'll provide a good fight, but at the same time, he may not win. So it's kind of hard to 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 really give Lucien Butte a good chance. Now, if Lucien Butte wins this fight, biggest win of his career by far. And I'm going to say, yo, Lucien Butte can probably give some real some some real problems to some 100 and um. 68 pounders, but despite the fact that he got a knockout in his last fight, he's still known to be somewhat of a light puncher at 168 pounds. And let's not forget what happened to um Labrito Andrade, or um I forgot his name, but it was this dude that was whooping Lucien Butte ass. This was years back, and the referee should have stopped the fight, you know, long before it ended. And basically, Lucien Butte got a gift decision in which he, I'm surprised he doesn't have any brain damage or something like that. So, James DeGale versus Lucien Boutte is interesting to see, you know, what Lucien Boutte is going to bring to the table because I wouldn't be surprised, especially with the power that he has, if James DeGale knocks him out. But I'm looking forward to this fight. I'm looking forward to see, um, seeing, like, where James DeGale go from. He goes from here because he went from one tough fight against Andre Terrell, I mean, Andre Terrell to a not so tough fight against Lucien Boutte. I'm thinking maybe who would he fight, you know, next? Would he possibly go after, you know, a weaker opponent like a George Groves? Or, you know, would Eddie Hearn try to put James DeGale versus Martin Murray to give Martin Murray another shot? You know, since Martin Murray looks somewhat good against, um, even though he lost, against Arthur Abraham. Because I don't think that he's going to go from Brandon Gonzalez to um, to um, Marco Antonio Parabon to Andre Durrell to Lucien Butte to another big name. You know, I, I just don't I just don't see that as being the plan. I see them taking a step back after this fight but like I said when it comes to the 168 pound division there's so many different paths that that James DeGale can go and there's so many big you know fights out there that he can have like for example you still got some buzz out there for fans that want to see James DeGale versus George Groves too and it'd be a chance for James DeGale to avenge the only loss on his record and then it could be George Groves you know, next time going after another title. But he's got to get past Lucien Butte. It's a fight that's under the radar on a day of big fights. You got Tyson Fury, Vladimir Klitschko, or Vladimir Klitschko, Tyson Fury, uh, Charlo versus Camford, Spence versus Barrera, you know, and then of course, DeGale versus uh, Butte, um, Imam versus Granados. 
Um, a couple other fights, too, that I'm probably leaving out. But I'm T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live. I cover every single major fight live. Please subscribe.